All right, people, we're talking about Galatians today. Paul's conversion. Paul's talking about being moved from another gospel. Do you understand? You got to understand sometimes in the process, you got to do away with all old things in your conversion process. Let me tell you something, people. You can get saved at a church and then realize there are problems in that church. Because you're going to start seeing things that you didn't see beforehand. You're going to start seeing traditions that contradict God and his words. You're going to see things going on in your life that you embraced. But now you don't want to be a part of. Think about it. Paul did away with his old traditions. Was taught to my like was a master in the Jewish religion. And when he came to the knowledge of Christ, he went from persecuting Christians to being persecuted or embraced by those who knew him beforehand. You know, they was like, whoa, when is the same person that was bad mouthing Christians that was persecuting him, that stoned Stephen, consented to the death of him? He said, uh, he was talking about the Corinthians. He said, I, I knew a man, brother, in body or spirit, I could not know not, that was caught up in the third heaven. Was he talking, referring to uh, Stephen? I don't know. Who knows? He said, brother, in the spirit, or rather in body, I know not. One thing about being a Christian, man, your whole life changes. You know, you're going to be seeing spiritual things and fleshy things at the same time, trying to use the discernment between the two. Do you understand? But one thing, one key element, he said, don't let nobody move you to another gospel. But if you read in the Bible, they're talking about they preaching another gospel. That's not a gospel. They switch the words to the gospel. Why do you think the Bible talks about one accord so much? One accord. Why are there so many different interpretations of the Bible? You, you know how many groups use the Holy Bible? And yet at the same time, preach another gospel. The Hebrew Israelites use the Bible. Or they may use the Torah, who knows? You know, the Mormons use the Holy Bible. The Catholics use the Holy Bible and some other doctrine too. Come on. Why are there so many different gospels? So many different interpretations of the same Bible. You see, I used to try to figure out what denomination I was. Then I realized I'm, I'm in no denomination. I'm just a follower of Christ. Uh, I'm a Christian. That's it. I'm not a Pentecostal. I'm none of that. Keep it basic. You know what I'm saying? It's about traditions and things of such. But you're changing now. Some of the things that, when they talk about going through things in Christ, right? They say they shake some things up. You know, some of the things may be true that you learn, but some of the things going to go away. I'm for real. You see, a lot of churches don't understand. Uh, they'll have people that come to church and give their life to Christ. And then after coming to church and giving their life to Christ for a while, they branch away from the church. And the people are like, why you stop going to church? Why you stop going to church? Uh, actually, I never stopped going to church. <laughs> He said Christ came to him and taught him. Christ can come into your life and teach you. And give you understanding. You have not because you asked not. But you asked and missed. I was reading from Mark this morning. When he's talking about he will give you whatever you desire if you pray and you believe and not doubt. I'll give you what you asked for. And then he led on to forgiveness. Right after that. So you, can, you can't have hatred and all this in your heart and expecting God to bless you. <laughs> you understand? The Bible is so self-explanatory. But it's like people will take that have not and add you or give you whatever you desire and just leave it there. But you got to read further. It's all about God's will too, what he desires for you. So God is trying to make your heart and your desires line up with what he wants for you. Do you understand? Like, I still desire to make music. But it's not the same music I used to desire to make. Do you understand? God's going to line you up with his will for your life. A lot of ways that you are 
I'm not going to change completely. He's not trying to recreate you into a whole nother creature. You still going to look the same. Your voice probably ain't going to change much. You're born again, but you're still a grown man or a grown woman. He's going to change certain characteristics about you spiritually. You understand? He's going to cook you up. He's going to make you the right person for the job, right man or woman for the job that he has for you to do. But it still has to line up with the will of God. Y'all ain't understanding me. You see, a lot of people thinking they give their life to God. Let me go back to wanting to make booty shaking music. Done, been there, done that. When I gave my life to God, I went back to music, right? And I started making back world of music again. Hypersexualized, this and that. And I, I just put it this way, I end up losing that computer. <laughs> By one way or another. When God wants you to push his agenda, he wants you to push his agenda. Not yours. You know, I did just like most artists do today. I'm just going to talk about God, but I'm going to talk about sex and perversion too. And call myself a Christian. Do you understand? You got to stay true to the gospel. Your character has to line up with the character of the Bible. I'm not saying you're going to be there to a T, but it's going to take you some time. You see, Paul even admitted further on, he like, not as, as though I have obtained perfection, but I reach towards perfection. You understand? You're not just going to wake up in the morning and be like, I got it right today. Like I said, let's go back to what I was saying fur further. Don't think that you're just going to wait to your deathbed and be like, okay, I'm going to give my life to God now. I've been living an unholy life my whole life, but it's about time for me to die. And the thing is, God is so cunning and so smart that you can't just get a free pass like that with him. Now, the thing is, there are people that, are, that walk in ways of the Bible and don't know Jesus. Now, you can walk in the ways of the Bible and the standards of the Bible and not know Jesus and then know Jesus right away and then understood why you was doing it and then die. But you already been walking the life pleasing to him. So it's different for everyone, people. But the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know what you need to be doing. You don't really need nobody to tell you nothing. People know what they're doing is wrong. You ever notice people who live for God or believe in God, they all just want to ask you questions they already know the answer to. But you know what I realize people want? Your opinion. <laughs> hey, uh, you think God's going to let homosexuals in heaven? You ask me that question because you already know the answer. The answer according to the Bible is no. You want, what do you think? It's not what I think. It's what the Bible says. Do you think I can be a liar and make it to heaven? Uh, uh, you already know the answer to that. You know, most people know the answer. <laughs> why they don't want to give you the answer? I mean, why they want, they want confirmation. But all they want to do, you see, these are the tests you're going to have in life to see if you're going to preach the truth. Are you going to preach what you want to preach? Well, you know, are you going to bow down? Are you going to stand your ground when certain questions come your way? I don't believe in different interpretations. I didn't have to debate upon debate with people. Well, you may read it this way, but I read it that way. I thought we were supposed to be on one accord. One of us going to be right and one of us will be wrong. Let's say you read one line in the Bible and four people are there and four people getting a different understanding of it. We got to come to a one, one understanding or we're going to be spreading different gospels. Now look at the world we live in today. Presbyterian, Baptist, Holiness, <laughs> Catholic, and people look at the world. And, and the thing is, it's not just with Christians. The Muslims are the same way. Guess what? The Buddhists are the same way. They got different sects. We do it this way. We do it that way. Well, think about it, people. I've been to, to Iraq. They got the Shiites. They got the Sunnis. They got this. They got that. What the world? You understand? They try to make it look like they got it all together. Uh, the Christian faith ain't got it all together. No, it's divided. 
it's divided all the way. So many different ways. You know, I'm telling you people. But the thing is, poor teaching and poor preaching is what leads people astray. You got to stick to the truth. We got to stop comforting people with lies. We just got to stop incorporating other ways into the belief system of Christ. We got to ask God. You see, but the Bible tells us so much, people, to seek heavenly things first. What distorts our reality, we are not trying to seek God. We're not trying to seek his understanding. We're not trying to seek his will. We're still trying to incorporate our will. I told you, people, you better get to a point in your life as a Christian that you don't trust yourself. But you trust in the Lord. You don't need to trust yourself. Place not your trust in man. I'm going to say that to people. Read between the lines. What are you? What are you? So you're trying to line your heart up with God's will. Why did God choose David? He was a man after God's own heart, but yet with flaws. So that's why when he messed up, God punished him to get him back in line. So if you have one man or woman after God's own heart, expect to be punished to get back in line. Expect to be chastised. Why would God want his sheep to go astray? So sometimes you got to crack that whip a little bit. If you call yourself a child of God, get ready for that part too. Or you just want the blessings, huh? Paul talking about having a thorn in the flesh with his infirmities. Why would Paul, an apostle of the Lord, have infirmities? Because he does. He's man. <laughs> Me and Paul used to beef, buddy. I was like, look at this bigot. Look at this boastful man. And I was like, then I started looking in the mirror. Look at this bigot. <laughs> look at this boastful man. So I see him myself. Boasting in the Lord. Bragging on the Lord. Talking about my trials and tribulations. You understand? It's not to be boastful. It's all for the glory of God. I had to realize why Paul was doing what he was doing. Then I had to realize Paul was growing in Christ. The more you start reading, Paul's words start getting clearer and clearer. That's why he said, those who are unlearned twist and manipulate Paul's words. So for about a year straight, I was just trying to pray. Lord, help me understand what Paul is saying. So I was thinking Paul was just a fake. You understand? Then I kept praying and praying and praying. And then you know what? The preacher at, at the church I was going to said, like, you know, just remember Paul was just a man. I was like, oh. I didn't even realize what he was saying to me at first. He's a man just like me. He's flawed. Just like me. And you got to really dissect his words to understand it properly. And it tells you that people have distorted Paul's words. Over and over again. Just like they distort all the gospel. To fit their narrative, their agenda. You're not trying to fit your agenda. You're trying to fit Christ's agenda. You're trying to be a man or a woman after God's own heart. You understand? I didn't heard somebody tell me about the, the moving of the mountain. Be like, you might can't move that mountain, but you can chip away at it and move it. That's not what the Bible said. He said, if you have enough faith, you can move a mountain. Clear. He said mountain. But the thing is, the God wants you to be able to, the God really wants you to lift a mountain up out of the sea. You got to understand there are mountains in your life. There are mountains that need to be moved. But you have to line up with God's will. He's talking about asking right. You ask anything in my name. There are certain mountains God wants moved in your life. Holy crap. Holy crap. But you got to study. And you got to realize once you become a new creature. Once you get rose from the dead. Let's put it this way. Christians have one Awaken when we got a rebirth, right? When we when we born again, when we give our life to Christ, we got a rebirth. That's when we wake up from the dead. 
and then we had a, another resurrection to attend. So in life, you only get two resurrections. You get the resurrection to the knowledge of Christ. And you get the resurrection when Christ returns. You understand? You know, you don't have to keep getting baptized. Because you're going to go through some things now. You just got to stay in the faith. I think a lot of people think that, like, okay, well, I fell away. Let me go get baptized again. You already got born again. Learn from what you did. You already gave your life to Christ. Now you're thinking just taking a bath is going to cleanse you over and over again. No. Learn. Grow. I don't remember hearing about none of the disciples being baptized more than one time. I remember I gave my life to Christ a few years ago. And I got baptized. You know, I was upset about that. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened. Uh, I went to a church, man, and I said, I'm ready to be baptized. And I, well, we ain't baptizing this week. So I had to keep waiting. I'm like, this don't make sense. I'm ready to get baptized right now. What are we waiting for? All oh, the pools broke. All oh, this and that. I'm like, God, I leave. You see, I started seeing things in the churches that was upsetting to me. I'm like, I'm ready now. And you put me on hold. <laughs> wow. You better see, you should have been got the baptism pool, pool fixed. I mean, you must have been doing no baptisms in here. <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying to figure out, man. We could have went to the beach later on. You could have filled a bathtub up and, and baptized me. There's a lot of things I started seeing that didn't make sense to me. You know, that's that's one reason why I think preachers need to be dressing all flashy and stuff. I can't get my suit wet. <laughs> can't baptize today. I think every day, every Sunday, they go to that church, that pool need to be ready. <laughs> it need to be ready, be pay people. Somebody might be ready to be baptized and born again right then. Oh, next week we'll do it. What the Lord said, if you have it at your disposal. You mean to tell me you have no water at your disposal at your church? <laughs> he said, and tell them to come again without giving them things that need for the body. Come back tomorrow. When three, three weeks come back. What if they ain't have time? What if the, you're, you're pushing them away by saying, wait. Let's say you're at work, right? And somebody talking about giving their life over to God. And you're a Christian. Would you going to be like, hey, come to my church Sunday. You can give your life over to God church Sunday. Hey, you better do your best. You better just try to give them, give them right, right then, people. Don't be shy. The Spirit will let you know what to do. Cause I'm like, I never baptized anyone before. You know what I'm saying? I never did. You know. Have the opportunity hasn't presented itself to me yet. You understand? You know. But if somebody comes to me and want to give their sight to the Lord, I'm gonna have to go ahead and bite the bullet, people. I'm gonna have to be what I'm gonna be. I'm gonna do my best. I ain't got no rhetoric by this. You know what I'm saying? You remember the dudes on the road to the road? He was like, I need to, I need to, I got a job for you to do, right? And uh, God sent this guy, sent one of the disciples over here. And he was, a man was in a carriage trying to get to know about God. And uh, he was reading the Bible. He said, hey, God, I knew if I don't understand, understand what I'm reading. So the dude started teaching him. And then uh, right in the process, the guy was like, hey, I want to be baptized. And the guy was like, pull right here, they're late. Let's get baptized. I'm just saying, I, I know I'm still like, I'm rambling here, but y'all got to get to what being a follower of Christ is really about. You want people to see your light and they want to hear about God to you. Or they're going to start confiding in you about certain things in their life. They're going to come to you. You're, like, you're going to feel like you never, you always got something to do. <laughs> it's no slack of work when it comes to the the word of God. Let me pause and I will continue.